Good morning, ladies. I thought I would come on for an impromptu video kind of discussion. Well, it's going to just be me, but I wanted to come on live because I wanted to talk to you about something I feel is really going to take hold very soon, especially as I'm hearing the rumors out there about an imminent recession that is on its way. It's very close. In fact, if it's not already here, I don't know, but it is going to start affecting us. And I wanted to talk about what I call the triple threat. They are three of the silent sisters. They are self-criticism, self-doubt, and self-sabotage. I feel like these three silent sisters of limiting beliefs go together. They really do because they feed off of one another. In fact, they double down on each other. They support one another. They're, they're like just having a good old party, right? So let's talk about them. Like, what are they? So self-criticism. This is one that I, I really believe shows up pretty regularly when you have a story in your head, right, that's on repeat. And it usually goes hand in hand, again, with self-doubt and self-sabotage. Like I said, the triple threat. Self-criticism, it's like where you're critical, like of everything that you do, no matter what it is, no matter what you're doing, even if you've done it before, even if you succeeded at it before, but maybe something's going on in your life. So now you start being really critical. Maybe you like deal with perfectionism, believing things have to be perfect. Everything has to be perfect. And instead of um, everything being perfect, while well, it has a way of, well, you know, having to work itself out to be however it turns out. But that can get in our head. We start criticizing ourselves thinking, well, if it isn't perfect, and I put it out there anyway, what are people going to say, right? That's the self-criticism. But that, where as I said, doubles down on the self-doubt. And again, with the perfectionism too, which lends into the self-criticism criticism piece, you might be that person who also has to control the entire process. In fact, you believe that the only way anything gets done correctly is if you know every step of the way. But the thing is, we don't have a magic ball. So we don't know if every step that we take, every action step that we take, every idea, every decision is the right one. It's just about feeling our way through life and allowing ourselves to be in the doing of life, which allows us to, if we fall down, allows us to look at it, get back up and get back at it, or we succeed and we anchor in those celebration moments. I always talk about this about anchoring in celebration moments because it's so important. Allowing yourself to remember when you anchor it in. And I'm not just talking about remembering it and thinking about it. I'm talking about documenting it, putting it somewhere so that you actually have written proof that you did something because you might need that again, because when self-criticism and self-doubt and self-sabotage show up, you might have to look back on that list of things that you've accomplished to help keep you inspired and motivated. So the next one, um, as I said, which goes hand in hand with self-criticism is self-doubt, right? This one doubles down, it piggies back onto the self-criticism. It's where you don't believe in the quality of what you produce or what you're doing or what you've created, or you second guess your decisions. You might even suffer from comparisons. I've heard it's called comparison-itis, comparison syndrome. You know, when you're comparing yourself to other people, you don't believe that you're good enough what you're doing. And you think that what you've got to offer isn't good enough because other people out there already have something similar or it looks better. But here's the deal with self-doubt. When you look at it, something and you are comparing yourself to other people, what they're doing, what you're basically saying is that you're not good enough. And the thing is, what you have to offer is going to resonate with somebody else who might feel the same way that you do, who might have similar life experiences that you do. And when you allow yourself to just go all in, stepping in outside of your comfort zone and stretching yourself, pushing through the fear of self-doubt and self-criticism, you might just reach that one person who's been like waiting on the other side of the void, waiting for that. They hear like a, a faint whisper and all of a sudden you come across and you and you're like giving them what they need, which is, 
that you get them, that they that you understand them, that you see them, right? And so self-doubt, as I said, can piggyback onto that self-criticism piece. Now, the third one, the third triple threat is self-sabotage, right? Again, doubling down on the self-criticism, the self-doubt, you know, bringing those two together, bringing it into the fold. Again, making you second guess what you're doing, even to the point where you don't trust your gut or your instincts because you're afraid, again, that you're not good enough to do it right the first time or ever. And when something's going right, you may even stop yourself because you start to look at the process and start to actually question, am I doing the right thing? And you might even sabotage yourself because you might be on so onto something and you're doing it the way that you had felt inspired to do it. But when you start to second guess, then you sabotage the work you've done, whether by maybe procrastinating because you get into that stop start mode and you stop yourself. And then you think, oh, am I doing am I doing this right? Is this good enough? Um, maybe I just don't want to see it or think about it for a while. And so you and so then you go and you do something else like for instant gratification to get yourself away from the thinking of it. But the thing is, it's still going to be there later. Like that, whatever that thing is that you've been, that goal you're trying to achieve, it's still going to be there. Even if you're not looking at it right now, you're still going to have to come back and face it. So again, that second guessing piece, that perfectionist attitude, that having to control it all, um, can make these this triple threat of self-criticism, self-doubt, and self-sabotage like really make a mess of things and really get you doubting who you are. But the flip side of this triple threat is another triple threat that I believe is more powerful than these limiting sisters of um, who belong in that eight silent sisters of limiting beliefs, who happen to be our inner villains' weapons that they that get used against us especially when we, we don't feel confident. So the flip side to self-criticism is self-reflection. And you're thinking, well, what do you mean by that? It's where you can concentrate on what's working. This is where you start asking questions around why something is working, or maybe even to the other flip side, why it isn't working, becoming resourceful of looking for the answers to fix something that might not be going so well that you may not, you know, really believe in because it doesn't really align with you. And it's not really part of what your mission in life is, what your spiritual vision, if you will, is. And so, again, you start asking those questions around why it's working, how it can be improved upon without being perfect, by the way, because you perfectionism is just something that has you chasing after the, the ever out of reach carrot that you'll never catch, you know, like the rabbit chasing after the carrot will never catch it because it doesn't exist. Perfectionism doesn't exist because if perfect existed, uh, then people would be striving for it. And those people who would make it would be able to give you the formula to make it perfect. There's no such thing as perfect. And so when you self-reflect on what's going right, looking at the looking for solutions rather than focusing on the obstacles, you can start looking about at ways of like, how can you start taking action steps, celebrating them when you do, like I said, anchoring that in by documenting it. Even if you have an accountability, um, what I like to call an accountability celebration partner. So we have the accountability partner, right? Of taking, of doing goals and you want someone to be holding you accountable to doing things. Well, how about having someone who is, accountability, somebody that you lean on, that you trust, that you trust, and that they can actually say to you, oh, guess what? You did this before because you might forget and you get into that moment, right? So it's having that accountability partner who can remind you of your things that you have accomplished so that you can get inspired and motivated. And you learn to flip the story from one that keeps you stuck to one that propels you into action. Now, the second one, self-doubt, the flip side of that is self-confidence. And I know this is easier said than done because confidence, it's something you build upon. It's not something you automatically have, okay? It's something you build upon. And because confidence comes from the doing and, and succeeding, and sometimes we don't succeed. 
And it's having the confidence to get back up again and try again and help yourself to figure that out, how to, to move through and achieve your goals. It also has you allowing yourself to find those people in your life, again, who you can lean on, whether it's mentors, whether it's good good quality friendships, whether it's a coach, whatever that looks like for you, help you realize that you don't have to figure it out all on your own. Because again, we're not meant to be uh, to, to go through life alone. That's why the name of this group is we are um, the group that I have uh, in Facebook is we are better together a community for women and also transform your triggers for success community. These two Facebook groups that I have is because it's it's because we are meant to go through life together and help support one another, inspiring each other, motivating, uplifting, right? Encouraging us to get back at it when one of these triple threats kind of tries to like chime in, okay? And so it allows you to, to re realize you don't have to do it on your own because you have people who care about you and who you trust, right? Reflecting on your past accomplishments again, right? But using those to inspire you. And the last one is self-sabotage, right? Instead of sabotaging yourself, self-encouragement. This is where you start focusing within. Yes, focusing within and allowing your inner hero. That's the positive voice in your head. That's your gut instinct. You're in, you know, you you un, you know that you've got this, that you've got it in you to do things because you've accomplished stuff before. And that's your inner hero saying, hey, I've got you. You've done this before or you've done something similar. And if you haven't, one of the great ways to get motivated is to look for other people who have accomplished something that you're trying to accomplish. You know, that's what's so beautiful about the Internet. We can find whatever we are looking for. And this allows you to lift you yourself up, to encourage yourself, to focus on yourself, to believe in you and what you're trying to do. Focusing on your daily self-care, this is very important. Part of, I think, the triple threat gets in and takes hold is because we're not taking care of ourselves, you know, filling our cups daily. Because guess what? You deserve a life you love living, right? And if you are allowing the triple threat of self-criticism, self-doubt, and self-sabotage rule your life, I want you to start thinking about how you can use self-reflection, self, um, self-reflection, uh, self-empowerment, I should say not self-empowerment, self-reflection, self-empowerment, uh, self-reflection, yeah, self sorry guys, um, and then also using the uh, self-encouragement and self-confidence. And again, like I said, confidence doesn't come from already having it to do something. It's actually giving yourself the courage to go after something, even if you don't know if it's going to work out. In fact, you don't know if it's going to work out. That's the beauty of life is in the doing, in the succeeding, being able to say, woohoo, I did it, right? So look at that and try to figure out, like, where can you change self-criticism to self-reflection? Where can you change self-doubt to self-confidence? Um, stretching outside um, of the things that you are, uh, have been holding yourself back from doing and self-sabotage like where can you encourage yourself more looking at the past things that you've done grab yourself an accountability um celebration partner somebody yeah absolutely tell tell someone that you've achieved things so that you can go back to them when you are in those moments where you just don't feel like it life isn't going to plan so i hope this was helpful for you today i wanted to come on like i said for this impromptu training, um, because I really feel it's important to hear, especially with where the world seems to be headed right now, from what I've been seeing, a lot of rumors out there about us being on the verge of, a, of another recession. And I know that that gets a lot of people depressed, and especially in the timing of, of the year where we're starting to get into the weather's gonna start turning for those of you who live in uh, places where the seasons change. Um, and so that typically will end up, you know, really doubling down on how you feel about yourself and maybe bringing you into that, you know, where you don't feel good and the low energy and then you stop doing things that really lift you up and, and light you up. So I just wanted to remind you of that. OK, so anyhow, I hope you have a great rest of your day. That's all I wanted to say for today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you guys all again soon. Bye for now.